All right, we're going to talk a little bit about depth of field, okay? Now, depth of field, as you can see right now, mostly everything in the frame is in focus, okay? I think I'm at a, a F10 and shutter speed 50 because I'm using video, okay? So for video, that, that the, the frame rate I'm using is 24 frames per second. Um, so I'm using 50. We're going to do a lot of uh, video stuff in the future so you'll understand those dynamics. But right now, as you can see, foreground, background, mostly sharp, okay? I do my best to focus on myself. I don't have anybody here with me right now to help me focus. So anyways, before we begin, please subscribe. Check the link for the description of my Amazon store. There's many books in there that you will find useful, many of which I have written myself. So anyways, depth of field. What depth of field is, is... I can mean several different things, but for the majority of the time, it's talking about focus, okay? What is focused and what is out of focus, okay? Now, this is important because if you blur your background in, it can enhance your subject that you're shooting as well as give your photograph some depth, okay? At the same time, if you have, sh you know, that, that would be considered depth, shallow depth of field, okay? So, I'm in focus, for example, background blurred, okay? If you have everything in focus... It can be a great photograph because everything's in focus. You can see the whole entire scene. You can see the background, the foreground, even the midgrounds in focus as well. And that can make a great photograph. Now, remember, you always want to focus on your subject. You don't want to just go out there and just shoot scenes that are all completely in focus all the time. And having a shot of the field can help you achieve that, okay? Sorry, it's cold out here. <laughs> okay? If you have a sh So, for example, even if I'm right here and I make myself the background all blurry, that can be a great effect to achieve because it's gonna make everything in the background blurry. I'm gonna be in focus, okay? That way you can cut out distractions, you can get whatever framing you want and keep your, your subject in focus, okay? While in other situations where you want maybe a landscape, okay, that should still be mostly in focus in the background because my aperture is a smaller aperture, okay? And in that case, you're gonna want that for that background to be in focus and sharp. You wouldn't want that to be blurry, okay? Most of the time, okay? If you had something and you wanted to enhance maybe right here in front of the camera, maybe there's a rock or a statue or something, or a sign, you could make that blurry. I mean, make that in focus in the background blurry. So landscapes are a great place to make the background completely sharp most of the time, okay? Portraiture, you want to really get a mix in there for your clients or your, or your subject. I really prefer shots that make the subject really sharp and in focus, and the background completely blurry. I'm going to try something right now. It's probably not going to work out very well because of the um, I'm shooting video. I'm probably going to open up too much. Okay, as you can see, the exposure is kind of blown out right now, but the background you can see is a little bit washed out, um, unfortunately. But you can also see that it's, it's, it's a little bit blurred. This lens is only at 3.5 aperture. If I put my, you know, 50 milliliter on, millimeter, milliliter, millimeter lens on there that goes down to 1.8, you'd have a much more blurry background than it is right now, okay? So can you see the difference? I'm going to try to reach around here and bring it back to where I had it before. Okay, you can see that the background just became a lot more sharp. That's just an example of depth of field, okay? So get out there. This is why it's important to shoot in manual, okay? You can mess with that, the depth of field, the, the aperture, while adjusting your shutter speeds to accompany, to... Uh, compensate for that lighting change, okay? Right now in the video, it's hard to do that because I'm shooting video. I don't want it to feel choppy and have problems. So, get out there, shoot in manual. That way you can adjust the shutter speed to compensate for the aperture change. Because remember, when you open up that aperture, more light's going to come in. You're going to have to make your shutter speeds faster. When you close it down, less light's going to come in. You're going to have to give yourself a longer exposure to compensate, okay? So, get out there, do some experimentation. Uh, experiment with depth of field. It's probably one of the most powerful things you can change in your camera to enhance your photographs and make your photographs more creative and better, especially when you want to enhance your subject in front of that background. Anyway, until next time, please subscribe. Check out those books in the description. Talk to you guys later.